Hey everybody, my name is Seth, and today we're going to be jumping into Ray-E, and specifically their phone app as well as their cloud portal, and talk about some of the key features such as monitoring, report generation, and how to share the function with some of your installers. So let's go ahead and jump into the phone app. So on the phone app, when you're trying to access the monitoring function, go ahead and go to the basic settings, select monitor, and you'll be able to view things such as device info, Wi-Fi client summary, traffic summary, and client activity over the last seven days. You can also go to the top right and see current versus yesterday. And you can also select when you're looking at Wi-Fi client summary or traffic summary if you want to look at the last 24 hours or the last seven days. And you get some nice options there. Now, some other ways just to have generalized monitoring is by clicking on your switches directly as an example and be able to monitor them directly from the switch by clicking on individual ports. Or even going into the gateway to view some of these as well. And that also includes access points or any types of wireless bridges you may have on the network. Now on the cloud portal, you do get some more options when it comes to monitoring. So when you're on the project workspace, go ahead and hover your mouse over the tab on the left hand side called network wide under the monitoring section. You'll get some menus such as data insights, Wi-Fi experience, port settings, network overview, and more. For me, I'm going to go ahead and select data insights. And we'll get some insights on the products and the hardware we have on the system and you'll actually be broken down by device. So on the top left, we are under the gateway section right now, and we'll get some options such as CPU utilization, memory usage. We can go over to the switch, and we can actually choose individual switches we want to look at, and get some insights when it comes to their ports, their speeds, as well as it gives a visual difference between different port types, like electrical ports versus optical ports, and if you hover over the port, you'll get some additional information as well, such as port, what number it is, the status of the port, the speed, traffic, packets, and media type as well. When you want to look at wireless devices, such as access points, it'll give you some statistics when it comes to 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz. And it'll give you your RSSI statistics, which is just another name for Received Signal Strength Indicator, which kind of gives you an indicator about if the uh, strength of the connection is weak, medium, or strong. You can change these things at the top, such as RF statistics and AP load. Heading back to the network wide tab under the monitoring section, let's go check out Wi-Fi experience. Under Wi-Fi experience, you get more detailed report than the phone app version, including a bigger view of AP channels and user experience on either 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz bands, as well as a way for you to set a custom period of time to get a better view. At the bottom, you can also view device details to view information in regards to AP or the clients. Heading back over to the network wide tab again, just to show one more, you can go into network overview. Well, you'll get a generalized overview of the network, such as clients and traffic summary, user numbers and user rankings by SSID. You can also export this exact report into a PDF. Now there is a better report generation tool, but this is a good report. If you don't need the full generated report that covers more in detail. To get the reports generated, you're going to go ahead and select basic in the menus. And at the bottom left hand side, you're going to go to reports. Now this is actually going to generate a full PDF report with details of the project, including the status of devices. You can also edit the report by making your own generated custom report. So we'll wait for this to generate. And as you see, you get the report in here with a variety of information. But let's go ahead and at the bottom left hand side, customize it for a company. Let's go to edit. And the first thing you can do is upload a custom logo. So I'll do that now. I just uploaded a quick logo. You can also change the title. You can call it test title. You can edit any copyright. 
You can even edit the introduction to the project. You can also have an option to display team members or not by adding team members below. You can hide other things like risk or unhide them as well. And you can even add and customize the report further. Once you're happy with how the report is customized, you can hit save and it'll actually go ahead and regenerate the report when you hit the back menu. And you see in the top corner of the page, we now have it saying breeze. We changed the title of the report to test title. And we even have a list of the team members that worked on this job with their phone numbers on there as well, at least for the top two. And then we decided not to add one for John Doe the introduction of the project up top, and other information here at the bottom. Now to generate the report on the cloud interface, go ahead into the menus on the left hand side and scroll down to where you'll get the option that says delivery center. You have three menus pop up such as smart detection, project report, or project handover. We're going to select project report. And this is going to go ahead and deliver the report as well. It's the same exact report as what you'll see on the phone app. By scrolling down, we get the same type of information. Now, we can customize this report the same way that we did in the phone app by simply going up to the top where it says edit. And the same customizations exist here as well, such as uploading a logo, changing the project description, adding team members, and see some of the other information down here as well. So you do have an option as well to share your project where you may want to share the project with different installers and technicians on your team or maybe the property manager or the owner of the property. How you do that is in the home screen, you're going to see three dots next to the demo project to title that you have. And you're going to see share. Now you have two different permission types, either read and write, which basically allows the person to view and manage the network. And you have read only, which allows the person to only view the network. And at the bottom, you have validity period after exception. At the bottom, you have validity period. You can either choose forever, one day, one week, or just choose a customized option down below. Once you hit share, you're going to get a link to copy. Now, one key thing to note is if you're sharing from the phone app, the other person's got to receive and activate the share code through the phone app as well. If you're using the cloud portal, same thing. This gives you an easy way to ultimately share your project with technicians and having people all work on the same project. So once you copy link, when the person receives it, the next steps they have to do is go to received at the top. I got another code here from Joe uh, to go ahead and get a project shared to me. Now, when you prompt and you log into the Ray phone app, you might have to go ahead and allow a paste interaction in which the share the project will pop up and you'll have access to this now by simply hitting receive. Now you have access to this project as well. Now to share a project via the cloud portal, it's a very simple process. When you're on the home screen, you're going to go ahead and look for the project you want to share, go under the action setting and click on that little share icon. You'll get similar functions such as the phone app where you have read and write and read only and the validity as well. Once you're all good with your settings here, you hit OK and you'll get a link this time. All you have to do is copy this link and send it to the person. Now, I did get a link from a coworker, so I'm gonna go ahead and get their access to their project by pasting it into a browser. And I'll go ahead and receive this project by going ahead and hitting receive at the bottom. And I can go to this project, and I now have access to this project as well. This really allows the owner of the project to share it with his technician so everybody has access to it as well as give access to the property manager or anybody in the IT department within that company who may need access, making everything super easy.